Lifestyles continues. We are back with our garden guy, Charlie Stocker, and Charlie Janet is on the phone. Good morning. Morning, Janet. Good morning, Mr. Stocker. I have an anthurium, A-N-T-H-U-R-I-U-M. Had my eighth stroke in March, and my son brought it to the hospital. It's that from Hawaii. My two sisters said they'd been seen them in Hawaii with the big red beautiful bloom. I set it out one day, and it's got 11 leaves, great big elephant ear look, and 10 of them have gotten yellow. Did I do wrong? Uh, no, I would just put it in the shade, put it in a shady area and let it gradually... Oh, I brought it back in the house in the yeah. shade, and the, the pointer on it says temp 70 to 75, and we keep the house cool, but I just don't know. Have I watered it too much, do you think? You, you want to water. Here's the test for watering. Just place a tooth, toothpick in the soil, and if you pull the toothpick out and it has soil on it, then you know you don't need to water. If you pull the toothpick out and it has no soil on it, that's the time it tells you to water. You can do the same thing with your finger and just push it down to the first or second knuckle. And if you get soil coming off your finger, if, if it, you have soil on your finger, then you know it's not time to water. No soil means the soil is dry and that's when you water. That's generally the way to tell. That's a good, that's a good rule of thumb, if you yeah. will. No oh, pun intended. Oh, my. See? Oh, no, my. you're not the only clown around here. <laughs> All right, Charlie, Judy's on the phone for you. Morning, Judy. Hi, Charlie. Good Hi, morning. Um, I have a question about moving a variegated red dogwood tree uh -huh. that has been out for probably 15 or 20 years. Uh -huh. um, what would you think the chances of survival would be if we got someone to move that? Uh, I, I think depending, I think probably 50%. I think 50%, it probably has some special um, emotions involved. It's a special tree for you. So if unless you have to move it right now, I probably would wait for the second killing frost. And, and let me say this as well. <clears throat> when you want to move something like that, or if you want to move something from the woods into your lawn, you can do it successfully, but pick that tree out, and a year before you move it, go to the tree and for every inch caliper that that tree is, every inch caliper, you would go 12 inches out and run a spade all the way around the tree and you're gonna sever some roots. But what happens is those roots then become more concentrated inside that area that you formed around that tree. So when you do transplant it, there are the roots, there are, they are there and will cause the tree to be survive, will survive when you transplant it. If you don't, all of those roots are out further, you transplant it and it has no means of sustaining itself. But to make a long story short, if you wanna move that Coosa dogwood, do the same thing I just talked about on the azalea. Dig a moat around it, water it in, you're hydrating it, do it for two or three days, then transplant it. We do Japanese maples in the heat of the summer just like that and it works out well. It's just getting that really drenched. You've got, to, you've got to hydrate that tree. All right. I think we have another caller. Do we have another caller? Mick. Good Mick. morning, Mick. Morning, Mick. Mick. Mick gave up on us. Are you there? Yes. There okay. he is. Okay. What's your question, Mick? Uh, I'm wondering, is there an advantage to suckering tomato plants? Oh, yes. Um, you want to you sucker your indeterminate, meaning the ones that get tall. You want to sucker those. The determinate are the bush tomatoes that produce like aroma, that produces all at the same time, basically within a two-week period. You really aren't so interested in suckering those because uh, they don't need that suckering. But indeterminate, your better boy, your, your, uh, uh, your big boy, uh, your heirlooms, they all should be suckered. They really should be. Good question. And also on nutgrass. Nutgrass is coming in. People want to know how you're going to treat it. And it's going to be on our Facebook page, Hey Garden Guy, Charlie Stocker. I'm going to post that this afternoon telling you about how to treat nutgrass in your lawn. All right, check him out. Hey it. Garden Guy, dot right. com, and on Facebook. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> we'll be back with more local lifestyles right after this. Stay with us.